Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, greetings from North Carolina State University. I am recording uh, this uh, opening ceremony lecture or talk from my office at the Wilson College of Textiles, North Carolina State University. For those of you who, who did not uh, meet with me before, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I am Abdel Fattah Siam, and I'm currently department head in the uh, Wilson College of Textiles. Specifically, I'm heading the department of apparel and textile technology and management. I have been with the North Carolina State University for 30 years, three zero. And uh, I have been here enjoying my job, teaching and doing research on fabric formation and the structures. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizing committee for inviting me to be a part of the opening ceremony, which is great honor and I respect it very much. And uh, uh, for a conference uh, on the very issue uh, and its variation, the COVID-19 and its variants, that prevented me to come and share with you in person uh, this uh, conference, which I never missed. This is the first time I missed this conference and which is make me feel jealous that you are in Hardaka enjoying the beautiful uh, beaches. And uh, I'm sure that you will have interesting program. The program is very good and uh, current and it, it provides visions from you, all of you uh, for the development of quality education under the requirements of the digital age or using the digital age in the pandemic uh, era. Uh, Allah willing, I will be in person in the coming uh, uh, conference. Uh, facing the pandemic was not easy until now. And I, I hope that every one of you should be uh, very cautious in uh, protecting yourselves. So whenever you are close to anyone or in closed uh, area, please wear this simple device, magical, very important. And I hope most of you got vaccinated, which is uh, another important defense against the pandemic. Be proud, this is a textile product. Uh, First thing is first, when we started here in, at the College of Textiles, Wilson College of Textiles, uh, in March, when the pandemic started to come here to USA and became really an issue and realized that that should be taken seriously. Uh, first thing is first, we, uh, provide protection from the virus before we can do any step. Everybody stayed home. And before we, we didn't have vaccine, we didn't have even testing yet. And uh, at the College of Textile, the first thing we did in the college, we have the equipment to produce masks. And we produce enough, slowly but surely enough for our employees that must come to the college and our uh, staff, faculty and staff, and some student uh, who uh, has to come here uh, for uh, running equipment and such. So this is what we did. We didn't have vaccine then. We didn't have testing then. And we produced not, the max is not only for the College of Textile, but also for the 
university and for also the community close to us by the campus police. Campus police has to be on campus in the, at work here. So we provided them uh, masks. So we did a lot of uh, great work for the community. And this is a message for me to the textile. You are the textile people who can do fashionable masks and fashionable clothing and protective clothing for the first respondent and for the caregiver, health caregiver. So I'm sure uh, many of us in textile provided that service. Uh, in the pandemic era, responding to the students' educational needs uh, was not easy. Uh, suddenly you are shifting from in-person classes to online classes. No one showed up here. We were not allowed to be in on campus here. So we had to respond to the student edu students' educational need and we wanna keep them progressing toward finishing their degrees, whether they are undergraduate student or graduate student. So the demand for the digital technology increased. And this of course caused a lot of issues. Wi-Fi, while Wi-Fi in the university campus is very strong at our homes, they are not so, especially when everyone need the Wi-Fi to record from home. So we were able to record from home and communicate with our students. Personally, I had all my classes online. The classes I teach in person were also recorded for online students. So I will always teach each of my classes online and also in person. So I had no problem running the pre-recorded videos for the entire classes. The in-person became online and online was there already, online. Uh, when the pandemic start uh, to be uh, understood and we start to have vaccine and uh, testing, we became more confident in allowing the students to come to campus. So the second semester after the first uh, pandemic semester or was mostly online because we still have many of us skeptical about coming to in-person classes. So we have uh, online, mostly online, about 70%, maybe campus-wide, 70% or more uh, uh, classes were online. And uh, we have some uh, hybrid and very small amount of classes very small number of classes were in person, but the hybrid was uh, uh, also there. So uh, how can we give our student hands-on? Our students are, uh, are fashion, style design, whether they are working with net design or woven design, they need equipment, they need to have hands-on. So to mitigate this effect here, of the pandemic, we have uh, we had loan program. We gave our students machines, uh, especially a machine like iron, iron uh, sewing machine. We have uh, many of these we acquired quickly, and we had a loan program to give our student. And whoever wants to come will come to the parking lot with car, and then our technician will go there and give them the machine and give them the equipment needed and the fabric needed to get them hands on. Our faculty uh, to let them understand how to deal with hands on at home, they also had their machines either here, they were alone here, so no problem. They could go to the lab and record an equipment. We will, they will have camera set and show the equipment while the faculty and technician show them how to handle the fabric and cotton sew uh, or knit at their 
uh, houses or home apartments. So this is what we how we responded, and uh, when the student uh, start having in person classes, all our management classes we have management and we have technology classes. All our management classes and technology classes are really good for online. Uh, better, I'm not saying excellent, but better than the studio, fashion studio classes and digital design classes, uh, woven design classes, knitting, knitted fabric classes, all these classes the student has to come uh, to gain hands-on. So what we did we have uh, quickly reconfigured the spaces and made a space for each student in the studio or lab. So we have uh, like uh, walls made from uh, plastic sheets uh, that you can see through, but every student have a exactly own station, own space, and the spaces are uh, separated by these sheets, as I mentioned. And to prevent the use of uh, equipment, shared equipment, every student has on that space, uh, machine, sewing machine, iron, uh, fabric, and uh, needles, everything that's needed for the studio class or studio period, they have in that isolated, workstation for the student. So they don't have to touch and uh, uh, transfer virus this way. So prevented transferring the virus. And we are proud at the Wilson College of Textile that other colleges came to see what we did in our space to reconfigure it and make that isolation or make that workstation. We also proud to say that we did not know of any case that was caused uh, by transferring the virus from student to student or anybody to anybody uh, at the College of Textile. So we don't have any cases. So I, I'm sharing with you what we did. So. Uh, I'm not there to listen to your experience uh, and how did you do it? Uh, but I think uh, I consider what we did is near ideal or ideal. Okay, uh, I would like to share with you other uh, area we are working on. The very quickly, the government provided funds for COVID, uh, 19 mitigation, how to overcome that, doing research. Whether we improve uh, the mask or uh, the gowns and, or understanding how the virus is transferred from surfaces, all this kind of research were uh, provided for the university, university wide and based on competition. If someone has a good research, the agency will fund them. So we got a lot of funds uh, from uh, the uh, government and uh, industry in, in the area of fighting the virus. Uh, moving forward, we will not let the COVID-19 stop us. We soon, in, uh, after, in the second semester, we allowed the research student to come back and do their research for their thesis to finish their research. And many of them graduated uh, without um, much loss in their uh, education uh, target. Uh, the current hot area in the world now, uh, especially in, in, in USA and in the College of Textile here, uh, we are uh, the textile industry and textile researcher, we did not do enough to protect the world from what they call now microplastic. Microplastic comes from textile. We are 
in the textile industry, when I say we are the old, old textile community, are responsible for the pollution. The most people who pollute the environment is the textile. It comes from textile. If you look at the waterways, uh, seas, oceans, you will see plastic bottles made from plastic, which is polymer. Uh, you will see uh, fabric. Uh, even in the air, some people find fibers floating in the air. And this is made from uh, mainly polyester and, and other fiber. Polyester is the most used synthetic fiber, which is causing a lot of issues. There are a lot of research going on to even uh, improve polyester. However, you know, there are many research now going on into uh, natural resources. Go green is what we have now, a motto uh, that we use uh, for sustainability. Going green means a circular economy, meaning that when you start designing a product, you need to think about its disposal. We need to think about how we can bring it back and recycle it. Go back to square one when we design. The design is very important. Why, for example, we mix polyester with cotton? I can make polyester behave like cotton or cotton behave like polyester. Single fiber now should be the mode because recovering polyester, which is uh, polymer from petroleum with cotton, uh, how are you gonna recover these two fibers? If you recover it, you're gonna have really to do it with harsh chemical treatment and costly uh, way. So we need from the start to think about how to make things green so we can recover it and recycle it many, many times, not once, not twice, but forever. That's what we call uh, circular economy, circular economy. So people are now working with hemp, flax, and in Egypt, flax was uh, done thousands of years ago by the ancient Egyptians. Uh, so flax is there, very strong fiber. Hemp is very friendly fiber. And also we need to th think about the waste. Waste from soy, uh, soybean, waste from any bean, waste from uh, any tree. You can take the waste and extract the cellulose material, all protein material, and make protein fiber or make cellulosic fiber based on cellulose acetate or based on the rayon uh, uh, process. Uh, we have rice straw we will burn it and same thing happened here they we will burn uh, the byproducts from uh, soya bean for example for energy or for just burning it because nobody will want to pick it up so we can convert this to valuable material extract the fiber from it and convert it to green fiber that can serve the circular economy uh, we also uh, seen, and uh, myself did uh, work on asphalt, the asphalt, the asphalt, uh, which is used in dramatic quantity worldwide. We can reinforce the asphalt with fibers from waste fiber using cellulose, microfiber, or whatever fiber you get, uh, coconut fiber, whatever fiber you can get from the waste and put it on the road and this could be recycled many, many times. The road, uh, when you put fiber on it, uh, it prevents it's a crack and makes it live longer. And as such, you don't have to recycle it. When you recycle it, you can remix it and remelt it and re uh, put it back on the road uh, with the same construction, same amount, same thing. You, know, you can redo uh, it again and again and again. Uh, we have also the waste from rubber, from tire. There are million and million tire per day wasted in the world. And what we do with it, in many countries, they burn it to get rid of it. 
if you many countries, many companies now are taking the tire and grind it to small particles and you can mix it in many application. And one of the application we found and we used and we published paper on it is to use the rubber in the mix of asphalt. So, and we actually mix it rubber with fiber from soy, cellulose fiber from soy on the asphalt and we tested that and we found out it can last for a long time and actually made the asphalt better. Uh, 3D printing is another uh, technology we are using. 3D printing is, if you read about it, it is it's helping the circular economy because when you print something using 3D printer, you can print solid material. You can print flexible material to shape, knit shape, you don't have waste. In cut and sew, you have to cut and sew and you create a lot of waste. But in 3D printing, which is growing technology, that 3D printing is uh, currently booming. And I acquired uh, one of the state of the art and we had actually, at least in this college, 10 3D printers. Uh, with this here, I think I uh, made a recommendation uh, for the conference, for maybe next conference, maybe next conferences. And I hope that uh, you uh, will benefit from uh, the points I raised. And I wish I was there to benefit from you as well. Uh, but I will follow up and see what has been covered in the conference. Hopefully, I can get the book of abstract at least. Uh, with this here, I wish you a very successful uh, conference, and I know it's going to be successful, uh, especially uh, Dr. Amani, the uh, energetic Dr. Amani Shaker. Uh, we are collaborating in many ways of research. One of them is electronic textile, and hopefully you can collaborate more and more. And I'm sure under her leadership and her team, Nothing will be done without team. I'm sure that she got the good team that I saw before and probably more joined the team. And I wish you all the success in your conferences. But I will leave you with a message that please stay safe. As I started, please wear this when you are too close to each other and they are not eating. When you're eating, stay away from each other at least uh, uh, six feet, which is about two meters. Uh, with this here, if you are not vaccinated, we're vaccinated, you can come a little bit closer. Uh, with this here, I will tell you, uh, Assalamu Alaikum, uh, goodbye, and have a great uh, three or four days during the conference.